Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Uh -huh. it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Yes, it is. It is Wednesday morning. It actually feels like a long time ago. It does. Since last Wednesday. It usually feels like it was just yesterday, but it actually feels like a long time ago. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it was yesterday. No, no, it does not. Probably because there's been a lot of things between last Wednesday and today. There have been. There has been, been a lot. Busy. We yeah. have. It's been. It's been kind of good. It is. Yeah. So, this uh, is a really cute project. This is a very cute project. And um, I hadn't worked with iron on vinyl before, what was it, spring showers? Spring showers, yeah. I think. And I really liked it. Yeah. Um, I was like, wow, that really changes the fabric mm -hmm. without changing the fabric, changing the fabric yeah. and having to add in a lot of weight and, and whatnot. So I really like it. So I, I'm... Um, yeah, I like this. It's this, really nice to put on the bottom of a bag too, because it um, it, it helps. gives it just a little extra well, it, from the wear and the tear. Easy but... to wipe off, because you know you set your bag down and you're like, eh. mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Connie. Oh yeah. So yeah, so, I I think that iron on vinyl is a really great uh, thing to have, mm -hmm. just in your repertoire of yeah. Oh, I need a little bit of that. And to have it on hand because right. you just never know when you can. And it doesn't have to be in the pattern for no. you to use it mm -hmm. because it doesn't change no, the doesn't fabric really. really. So, it, I mean, you can, fine and, yeah. you can use it just like a regular piece of fabric, yeah. um, which is really cool. It is a really nice feature. So yeah. we're going to make reusable sandwich, sandwich. or snack bags, yep. whatever you want to. Whatever you want to put in it. Yep. Um, did we pick, we picked the big one. I picked the so big one. So we're going to, we're going to make, you know, cause we like our snacks. <laughs> we, we want a lot of room to put the, whatever in there. So lots More and lots of space. So, so you can do this design in a five by seven hoop or an eight by 12, but we're doing it an eight by eight cause it's an eight by eight design. Yep. It's a square. So yeah. you don't have to have the rectangle, but depending yeah. upon your square ish. Option. It's a uh, seven, Sorta. about seven by seven and a half roughly yep so uh we have the iron on vinyl yep. we have some fusible no uh woven on mm -hmm. there so we used our easy tee and then we have a little bit of leather and then some stitching and the pattern calls for little metal snaps if you did purchase a kit from us i apologize we did not put snaps <laughs> in your Sorry. kit um I probably would mostly just tuck the top of mine in like the old fashioned sandwich bags right. tucked in. Um, but we're going to use uh, cam snaps today. So we'll show you how to use those. And it's not a product that we actually carry in the store. No, uh, but you can get them, them because off of, of all of the different projects. Yeah, that... you can be, get them off of Amazon and, and places like that. So we'll show you how easy it would be to add that to that. And if we were going to put a snap on, this is the one. This that is Lisa what we would I both choose would to do. Would both choose to do this because sure. it's plastic, so it wouldn't get. Um, I don't know about the metal and the and getting it wet and the thread the well, way and, that it stitches and, on and. Right, and if you are having food pieces, yeah, food could get stuck underneath a sewn-on snap, yeah, and yuck. Yeah, this wouldn't have that. Right. I mean, there's a pretty good seal, yeah, around a cam snap, so you're not going to get stuff underneath. Um, underneath those. So, uh, right. I don't think that, and that's what we would choose. That's what we would choose. So <laughs> Long that's... story short, that's what we're going to do because that's what we would do. Yes. So we'll show you how to do that. And, um, and if you've got, you know, maybe you've collected cam snaps, which you've never used them before. Um, I mean, well, who would do that? <laughs> I have a pretty good, selection. I have a very large collection home though. I do use them. Yeah. I have, used nowhere near as many as i have. purchased yeah for sure the, so the cam snap people used to come to the sewing expo so i always used to collect the collect different the sizes little, and the colors shapes and colors yeah. And, and things yeah the last thing i bought i, I think i have flowers now mm -hmm. and flowers in circles i don't know that i have other shapes yeah but i think i have flowers now but that that's I, what we're going to be doing before. for ours so. so um yes we can do that, Misty. Do you want do we, uh, just a kit or just a design? Would you like the fabric bundle as well as the design is the question. Yeah. So uh, shall we start? We should. And okay. by the way, hi, Becky. Hi, Dee. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> so. Um, All right. So I'm going to flip oh, the camera over here. So there was a little bit of prep, nothing crazy, but just you want to prep the fabrics because... Honestly, there's not a lot of stitching in the hoop. It's just getting your fabrics ready to go in the hoop mm -hmm. is really 
um, what's going on. So again, we're doing the larger size. So um, just the design, no problem. Perfect. So there's the cute cover of the instructions. I'm gonna set that aside because of course we don't need that. Um, so you do of course get a cutting sheet just like always. We're gonna do that eight by 12. So our pieces are either seven by eight or eight by eight with those are the two uh, for the front and the back. The back is the larger of the two pieces. If you were doing the five by seven, it would be six by six or six by seven. Yes. Those are the, the size differentiations for that. So in our kit, you get enough to make two of these mm -hmm. um, of either size. So you can do uh, absolutely plenty of, of stuff in there. The first steps, like I said, are going to be prepping your fabric. So you need to cut a, in our case, seven by eight and eight by eight. This is the outside. Um, so the actual bag front and bag back. And then we'll just put those there. Then we have the cherries, which are the lining. And this is what you're actually gonna be working on, like prepping with. Yes, you're absolutely. not gonna do outside of cutting, you're not gonna do anything to the outside pieces. So again, we have a six by seven and a six by eight. I'm sorry, seven by eight. See what happens when I read the other one? <laughs> um, we have a seven by eight and an eight by eight piece. So you can see that the one is an inch shorter here. The first thing that you're gonna do is put the fusible backing on each piece. So you'll need to cut a, a equal size piece of fusible backing and put that on. Once you have your fusible backing on, you're going to take the iron-on vinyl from the kit. It comes with this paper on there, you're gonna cut again seven by eight and eight by eight yep. and get a sized piece and then you will get ready to fuse those on again those already have the backing fuse on there yes all right so step one put the backing on <laughs> yes then do the vinyl yes all right so once you have that you can peel the little vinyl off here and align it to your piece so get your corners matched up so on and so forth and then place this back over it. So this would have been on the back originally. Mm -hmm. You peel that off because it's kind of sticky, mm -hmm. not like super sticky, just a little sticky on the back. Right. Um, so you're gonna peel that off, kind of stick it down, and then you're going to put it on the top. This is then going to be your iron cover. Yes. So you do not wanna place your iron directly on the, um, on the, the vinyl. Mm -hmm. uh, Becky is asking, does the fusible come with the kit? Uh, I know the, the iron... fusible backing does not, but the iron on vinyl right. does. Fusible backing would be There's something stabilizer, stabilizer. That we don't provide in our kits, um, but the specialty items we generally try to. So your iron on vinyl, and again, you get two, you can see there's two sections in there. There's a roll for each project and there's about a inch and a half, two inch, mm -hmm. two inch strip left over. Yeah. And again, we did the large, so if you were doing the small, you'd have even a little bit more. Yes. So um, we're gonna do that then to both. And you do wanna let that cool before you sew with it. Yes. So don't do that and then throw it right in the hoop. You wanna let that cool off. Um, you can then peel off that paper and you don't need to keep that. I only kept it to show you guys. <laughs> yes. So once it is like this, this is now, it's ready to use and it's, it's on there, it's yeah, not coming off. It's not coming off. So um, I don't need these at this point. And don't stick your iron on that, because yes. it'll melt it. Yeah, you do not want to iron directly on this. So um, I take that back. I would not throw those pieces away because you're gonna want to press your bag later. So you can tuck one of those um, yeah. into the bag um, at the end of the project so that you can press it that flat. That makes sense, yeah. Um, so you'll want to stuff some paper in there and those work perfectly for that. So hang on to that for just a little bit longer. longer. So um, I apologize that I said that. Um, and our stabilizer. Again, we're using an eight by eight um, because we're doing the larger. You would need either that or an eight by 12 to do the larger size. Um, the smaller size will fit in a five by seven hoop. Um, this is medium cutaway. We haven't used medium cutaway in a little while. Yeah. Um, but of course we want the support, yeah. um, which is why we're, so it's not a, it's 
like notional mesh in that it's a cutaway, but it's heavier and more stable mm -hmm. by itself. It stands up a little bit more on its own, yeah. um, but it is a cutaway like our notional mesh. It'll so give our bag a little bit of substance, a little bit more shape to it yeah. on its own. So, and it moves fairly well in, in and out of the machine. I tested it <laughs> before I, before I put it, uh, put it, the stabilizer into it. So we've got our favorite stitch coming up. Um, the first color that's going to show is going to be the apple placement line, but we're going to tack down and I hate tacking down. So if you can use one of these colors, sure. I, I, I don't like tack downs on beige fabric and red. It just makes me okay. nervous. What do you think? I, it doesn't. What I'm, I'm okay to do whatever you want. <laughs> She's going to do what I say today. How do you like that? All right. So again, the smaller of the two pieces is your front piece. So the first thing is the, um, is this the cut line first? This is going to be the cut line. Okay. Well, welcome. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, I will post uh, some links in just a second um, of where you can purchase these if you wish. Um, and then you can uh, follow those or uh, you can go to our website. It is scrolling at the bottom if that is easier for you. Right there. Um, so Lebeuf's. shop with us right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can get it there. But I will post the actual link to both the uh, design and the kit because they are sold separately. Separate. Um, so yep. while you... I'll switch the camera over and uh, I'll do this and, and she'll do that. And I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what we have stitched is a really hard to see because I chose white fabric, um, white line. So it is right there, it's a straight line. Well, what the heck are we gonna do with that? That is our cut line. So we are actually going to, first things first, put a hole in our stabilizer. I know that's totally contrary to everything we've ever learned, right? So I just stab into that and we want to cut right on that line. And the way that Kimberbell has designed the the bag steps that she um, has is actually really smart. The first class I ever took from her was doing this. And yeah. the first thing she said is, okay, we stitched just like this. And she's like, okay, everybody cut your stabilizer. And we're like, what? I'm sorry, what? Um, and in addition to the line, you want to go approximately a half inch past that line. So cut right on the line, and then when you get to the end, cut about a half inch past it. And then we are going to place that back to the machine. Can you hit the machine? I can. And we will stitch color two, which is going to be the placement line for our fabric. So here comes that. All right, here is the link for the kit. All right, what do we need to do now? All right, so again, the smaller of the two pieces of fabric is your front. If you forget, it does remind you of that in your materials in the cut list. So we are going to, wow, that is not very extra. Let's try this direction. <laughs> We're going to um, turn that. So the short side is this way. The eight inches is right and left, just FYI, I'm like that, that's not right. <laughs> and we want to completely cover up that, including the cut line on the top. So we're gonna go over the line at the bottom, just a little bit here. So over the line at the bottom and over the line at the top. So here's that cut line here. We're gonna make sure that we're overlapping that and the, the stitch line at the bottom. Once that is done, let's stitch number three, which will tack that entire piece down. 
and that'll just keep it from shifting as we're stitching. Yep, uh, links should be out there. Um... So there you go. So these are not supposed to be colors that show. I just prefer to put blending colors here instead of a highly contrasting color because I find that sometimes when you turn bags, these pop in here the and there. pop a little bit, yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't like to see those. That's fair. <laughs> so if they blend, then I don't have to worry about that. All right. Good morning. Good morning. We got a couple people grabbing in um, a little bit late. So hello. We're well, making welcome. the... Uh, the bag. We are doing the reusable sandwich snack bag yep. and we are doing the larger size. So we are now going to switch to do the apples placement and we're going to go ahead and go to the red. Okay. And this is out of our kit, I think. ES3015. So but it doesn't have a color on it, so it's possible that it's not. <laughs> but um, This is but our like, apple red. Exquisite ES3015. It's, it's a really beautiful, nice red. Kind of a cherry apple. Yeah. And uh, it matches that cherry fabric really nice too. So I gave you. I'm like, where did I put it? I lost the leather already. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to Sarah. Yeah, for safekeeping. Safekeeping. All right. So the first um, thing we're gonna do is the placement line to tell us where to place our leather. In my mind, this apple was going to be bigger. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's not because we wouldn't have enough leather to cover it. Space, I know, but in my You're mind, like, wait it was a second, totally what just bigger. Yes, I mean it could have been a little um, bigger. Do I guess I but... I don't put this on yet, or do um, I put this on yet? No, not yet, because okay. we're going to. Um... Oh, I take that back. It does want you to put that. I wouldn't personally have done that, but we'll follow the directions okay. today. Oh, it is going to be the like the permanent tack, tack down, down. So I guess that okay. kind of makes sense. All right. So this is going to tack it down. And the this that we are discussing is just a water soluble topper. And it does list that. And the reason that we're putting it on there is that it keeps the stitches up on top of the leather. It's really soft leather. And having done a few leather designs um, with Kimberbell over the course of these years. It actually does tell you to you they, want it in this yes, project though, do, which is um, they which is nice. They do that at the beginning, but they have like if you go to an older um, Kimberbell design with leather, we weren't putting this on top of it at first, but it right. really does. Um, and you and I both commented how sometimes we lose we lose the detail because it just kind of sinks, sinks in, in because the, the leather's really nice. Yeah, so it's real soft. supple and it just like it sucks that thread right down into it. So exactly. this will keep the thread sitting up on top. It sure will. So we now have the little face. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to do black, right? And, yeah. So um, stand out. this is uh, an isocord black that we're using. That's but the only one I could find. <laughs> any black will do. So yep. uh, it doesn't really matter. It's not a special. Nope. No special uh, uh, thread colors. Um, we've got white and black that are just standard white yeah. and black threads here. And this is just going to be a little smirk. Yeah. Um, I, it, that's what it looks like to me. It definitely is, is a, little a little smirk. smirk. Mm -hmm. The apple being like, ha ha, you thought I was bigger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, he's telling a joke. Yes. Which. Yes. I, Why I'll... did the apple stop running? <laughs> Do you know why the apple stopped running? No, he ran out of, it's good. I like your he answer said, better. He became a Granny Smith. The answer on the bag is he ran out of juice. <laughs> that was a good one, though. So, yeah, I like your answer. That, that's good. Yep. All right. So now that the face has stitched, we're going to remove the topper and trim yes. um, the excess leather away. So this is a raw edge. The trim that you see here is your final trim. So trim with care. And, the, and hopefully good scissors. The next thing that it's going to ask you to do is some of the running stitches. If you've ever done running stitches, you know that sometimes because they're very tight, tiny letters, your bobbin thread 
hoax up a little bit. So the recommendation is to wind a bobbin with the color of the thread that you plan on putting in. So oh, we these do are good ones. Yeah. have a green a bobbin test there. <laughs> that is going in so we can do the little leaf and um, the words. And so we're going to use color number ES988. That is the color that we've chosen for our green. And I am swapping the bobbin. You don't see me swapping the bobbin, but I am swapping the bobbin out. And Lisa's going to use her favorite double curve scissors. These are absolute favorites. And she's going to trim close and she's going to tell you her tips. So first thing I did, because we've got multiple pairs and some of these trim better than others, mm -hmm. is I trimmed the corner to make sure that I didn't cut into it Good idea. and get a crappy cut, cut that kind of separated it and smooshed it i don't like smooshed edges that, no. that does not look good at all um the other thing that i do is i pick fit pick it up so that i have more of a vertical piece that i'm cutting instead of having it laying flat because you're going to end up with again a smooshed piece mm -hmm. so i always pick my leather up and cut um so that i have as much of a vertical so I, that allows me to get nice and tight at least i think that's what makes that work for me hi karen but, um, good morning Hi, Karen. Which Karen? There's so many. I know. We have a lot of Karens. This is one of their softer leathers. They have the metallic ones are feel and cut very differently. Um, yeah, they don't have that same backing to them. Mm -mm. Just a little bit different. Yep. All right. So. Yeah. So you can see cute. that allows me to get right up next to it and cut nice and smooth. I think that everybody is going to be making some of these. These are really cute. <laughs> they are very cute. All right. So we have our um, green in, right? Yes, so we that's do. That's what we're doing? Yep. All right. And that and was um, ES988. That was our green. And, and a green in our bobbin. It, yes, that's correct. I was just going to say, it doesn't really matter um, what green. No. I mean, it's not like this was a specific. Uh, no. Well, hello, Canada. Yes. It does. Yeah. It's, it was just the one that we had here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean. No, it really does not matter. Just, um, and maybe you're not doing it out of these same fabrics. Right. So, um, you know, you want it. You can totally change the look based on, you know, if you have a. Uh, a darker background you might want a lighter thread here exactly kind of thing so that it would pop a little bit more so um, yeah if you're new to kimberbell um you might not be used to the like loosey-goosey thread choices um you know if you're used to uh different types of um you know design manufacturers a lot of times they're very specific they're about like, this color the number color number um kimberbell doesn't really give you a color number they just give you a color suggestion and it's loose <laughs> yes i actually like this system it yeah. makes it much simpler to I, I don't feel that stress of i don't have that color right and then i have to go hunt down a thread chart conversion and, right. and all of those those things so but for some people i mean some people feel the opposite um we we definitely want you guys to you know be comfortable doing whichever option which is why we give you the numbers that we're using right for that particular reason um, Patricia has a good question. Um, is the vinyl food safe? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I didn't make these kits, so I don't know what vinyl we've got right. in them. Um, Kimberbell doesn't have their own vinyl no. uh, because they were coming out with something and then they they, they changed, changed their mind. it because they uh, I, they were having didn't like the quality of it. Um, the vinyl that we're using is by Lazy, Lazy Girl. Girl, and I have used it several times, and I have used it for reusable type bags. Um, so I've I. I You're still here? I'm still here, yes. <laughs> um, what I don't know is I don't know that any of the manufacturers who make this, I don't know that they would actually they would claim write that. if it is food safe or not. Um, it's solid, uh, you know, as solid as, I don't know. If you were not comfortable doing this, um, you could use like the 
before we had fusible versions of these, um, we would use like uh, a Ziploc bag. Right. But we would kind of pre-quilt the area and then use the, the Ziploc bag in the area to give us right. sort of a reusable type of bag that we could use. So that is also an option if you are not comfortable using something yep. that doesn't specifically say whether or not it is food safe. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting. I, I, I highly doubt that any of them- I don't uh, think that it says them, on the right, packaging. Would say that specifically. Mm -mm. No, but the, the Ziploc bag is definitely kind of, I, I mean, I've used a Ziploc bag in place of, you know, sewing that in yeah, to something exactly. um, many times in place of vinyls. Right. So, and you, of course, know that that is. So exactly. if, if there's a concern from that, you could certainly go that route. And right. uh, I mean, these aren't water safe by any set. I mean, no. in water safe or water sealable, I guess you wouldn't right they're not waterproof right right <laughs> trish says even ziplocs are probably not 100 percent safe <laughs> probably yeah um but yeah i and if i am going to use something like that i like the freezer bag styles because they're, they're a heavier bit thicker and heavier yep, you have a heavier and they will definitely hold uh their shape more for like the multiple for sure. things that happened but uh are you surprised i'm cold <laughs> i'm not surprised you're cold because i am 100 percent like I'm you're like comfortable super comfortable yes yeah so yeah, no it does not surprise me even a little bit that you are freezing you need your sweater uh maybe you want this uh, one I'll or take mickey uh they're both mickey i'll take the new one okay i gotta cover the arms there's i can feel the air conditioning blowing right on me i can't do it <laughs> Usually I'm warm enough when we're stitching. Yeah. It's not real hot outside yet, yet so it hasn't really, mm, yeah. Oh. Eight, they're they're drink. drink from a hose and we are all still here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's really, I mean, you're, there's some truth to be to that. I'm, I I'm, think that uh, we all have a higher resistance to things than our poor children do yeah. because of all of those things. But um, Before we knew how bad they could potentially be. It's yeah. like those silly little TikTok videos or Instagram videos where someone is saying, you know, oh, you know, did you guys not have faucets? And we're like, no, because our parents locked us outside the house. Right. <laughs> yeah, we weren't, don't, we weren't. Don't open the door and let the air conditioning out. <laughs> yeah. I'll yell when dinner's ready. Right. <laughs> My uh, grandparents' house actually had a. A bell mm -hmm. that they rung for dinner. Yeah, I mean there was actually a dinner bell. A dinner bell. Yes, yeah, there, that was an actual thing. But you know yeah, they'd I mean, all be out working in the fields or in the barn or whatever, and yeah. so she'd ring, ring the, the bell. bell. Mm -hmm. But you know they didn't have phones. Even you know no. certainly didn't have cell phones. Right. And, <laughs> but um, as I yesterday I was texting Dave when he was outside to tell him to come in for dinner. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean we. Oh. My son's bedroom was. In, in the, the basement, basement. and yeah. it was i mean it was a hike to go down there yeah. and dinner's ready yeah. <laughs> you know? so i totally in the house yeah i still didn't go i would just i'd yell down the vent sometimes that would work but he gamed a lot so he always had headphones, headphones on, on so um it was very common that that didn't work <laughs> even the text didn't always work because right. if he was in the middle of a game he was oblivious to all other things exactly but, um but yeah it his street lights go on time to go home yep. exactly yep for sure yeah i didn't live in town so it wasn't quite the i didn't get left out of the house too much but um, right we definitely got sent outside to play for sure yeah. and i definitely drank out of the hose that is really cute it is very cute all right and then we're going to do it's the little apple right? the little leaf and then we're going to do the stripe on the leaf okay so we might i'm well wondering if just leave the... Do we want that to be our letters up on the top? That would be cute. Yeah, that would be cute. You want to do that one? Instead, Instead of, white, of the white? Yeah, just a little green tint. Just give it a little bit of something, something. Yeah. I like the smirk on the apple. That makes it yep. for me in any way. <laughs> He's really cute. She's got a little attitude going on. Mm -hmm. So... Shall we change we back? are to change back is mm -hmm. what it's suggesting okay. yes yeah, so i'm going to pull this out and 
and we're going to also change our top thread to the light green, which is just the detail inside the, the uh, it's not a flower, yeah. the leaf. We're using a pre-wound bobbin. If you're wondering why my bobbin has stripes on it, that's just as a reminder to it's us. It's a code, to uh, throw it away when we're, it's empty. Throw that plastic bobbin away when it's done, yes. All right, so I'm gonna um, do ES944. This is like a really, really pale Really pale green. green. I really like that color though. Yeah, it's really cute. So this is going to be super quick. Yes, it is. And then we're going to go to brown for the stem, I'm thinking. Yep. All six stitches. <laughs> All right. So now we are going to go, like Lisa said, to brown. And we picked ES878. Again, it was in the kit. It was in our kit. Yep. We're talking about our um, SNL stitching in style. Yeah. Thread starter kit, which is kind of a Kimberbell thread it's kit. It's Kimberbell themed in the aspect of we picked it to match their fabrics and things or coordinate with anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also a really nice, just general thread kit. It, it gives you a wide variety of colors. That it does. Carolyn's working on solids for us. She worked Monday picking colors. Yeah. She started just picking colors, like these are what match. Yeah. And then she's going to look in and see. And see what, what's what. Yep. All right. So Mr. Apple there is all stitched. All right. Now we're going to do some more piecing. So okay. um, Hi, the Mr. next D. step is going to be to place the lining fabric shiny side down in this case. So again, we have um, the seven inch piece is the one that we want here. So this has my iron on already there. So of course you want that there. And we do that before we stitch? Um, yes. Okay, because so we already have the top of the line. The, we already have the line there. So this line is what we're looking at and we want to place that approximately a quarter inch above that cut line. So there's that line. And we want to be roughly a quarter inch over that line. So I'm just going to double check. I think I'm good. It's slippery. <laughs> Sliding all over the place. I think that's why they call it slicker. You think? <laughs> All right, we probably need to put some thread in there. What color should we put it? Um, should we just go to the I was one? just looking to see. I think the next thing that's going to show is going to be those, uh, the letters. The so letters, let's just go to the light green. Okay, so we're going to put an ES944. That's the color that we are going to put. He ran out of juice in. And um, the next few stitches that we have, our steps that we have, are going to be like construction steps. Yep. So we'll just do that in this lighter color here. All right. Shall I? I was just looking to see. Double check. Do um, we need to tape it? You know. It's pretty slick. Um. We'll, we'll just make sure it doesn't move. I just can't see my cut line. Eh, I can trim it later if I need to. Yeah. We're just adding a couple pieces of tape in here because it is very slippery and we don't want it to slide as the foot glides across. I want to make sure it stays straight and that goes wonky. Yeah. All right. All right. So here we go. Okay, so it's too high, <laughs> but that's okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. Evidently, I need to iron. Mm. I didn't read that far ahead. <laughs> Is that our next step? Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to remove the hoop from the machine, flip the lining through that beautiful cut, and um, press. So we're going to need that beautiful paper that the um, the camera one is oh, falling out. Just barely looks like it's hanging in there. There we go. All right, all right. Let's move. We did use that. the Kimberbell paper tape. Yes. I uh, I bought some of the stuff that Ashley used, mm -hmm. and I used it for. I think I prefer the Kimberbell paper tape. Yeah, versus like the clear medical it, tape the type thing. It's um, the amount of sticky. Mm -hmm. The paper, the medical tape has a lot more, more stick. stick. So I guess depending upon your project right. and what you're needing, but um, big picture, um, I think I prefer this. I was watching, I, don't, I think it might have been a Kimberbella's and Fellas oh, post sort of go uh, crazy. Somebody asked um, if they, they bought some tape at the dollar store, but they bought like athletic tape. Oh, like the, the stretchy. Uh, yeah. And she was like, it's not coming off. It's pulling the stitches off. And people were like, oh, no, you need like paper tape. <laughs> yep. All right. I'm going to. Um... cut just a hair more. I didn't cut quite far enough. So the reason being, I need to fold this through that cut line. So I'm just going to snip just a hair past where I already had so that that fabric will fit through the slit. Otherwise, I'll have a big Yeah, it'll be problem. kind of a, a pain All right. in the butt. So we're going to take the lining and push it through that hole and pull the whole piece. It's where you need three hands. I'm just trying to do it on camera. It's I know, problem. right? And grab hold of that. And we're going to just take that whole piece into the back of the hoop. All right. You know what? I'm going to start with pressing from here. Okay. That's a nice angle. <laughs> it is, yeah. I moved my ironing mat, but I think I'm okay, actually. Where, oh, where did I put my paper? There it is. So we're going to cover up. It's only a small opening, but I don't want to hit... And I'm going to press that fabric fold there. And then I'm going to flip to the back and just slide up just the hair. There we go. Yep. So we are looking to cover that line, which I have more than enough clearance, which is. Is there a little pressing mat over there anywhere? It used to be. That would be nice, I'm sure, to press on. No. The little fly by seven one is is gone. Disappeared. Unless it's no, that's a quilt. I'll just be super careful. Okie dokie. Alright, so what we want to do is to press that seam as well but you want to make sure again that you're not hitting the vinyl itself so we want to make sure that that fold stays where could that have gone i don't know where it went i think we sold it i think so yeah and it's of course nice and hot now so i need to wait just a minute before i do anything else but I can tape that down. So I've got that nice and in position and I'm going to take my tape and I want to make sure that that is nice and flat and then tape the back. 
it is important that you get those corners taped down. I'm not doing an angle because I don't want to get too far in here, but you want to make sure that you get those ang those corners, corners so it doesn't fold <clears throat> in and ruin your bag. Right. All right. So make sure that you get those those corners taped. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of tape up here. Not a lot, but just to keep that <clears throat> um, that little loose they, area. They can't see. I mean, they can tell, but they can't see. There you go. So I'm just protecting this fold. Yep. And don't press. Uh, don't, unless you have something underneath. Yes. And I can't find that pad, so. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, Kim. Oh, Edie says uh, her order is in. Well, we'll get that right out to you. We All promise. Right. So you can see we're right through that stabilizer. Yep. Good job. To the back. And I've got a really nice fold line. So that's how we get that lining without having multiple hoovings. Yes. Which is super smart. Yes. But super creepy the first time somebody tells you to cut your stabilizer. Totally. All right. You want me to so. do what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, <clears throat> all right, I did all of that. Okay. And now it's going to stitch the lining in place. Okay, so now we're gonna do basically like a squaring stitch all the way around. Are we threaded? It, we were, that whole stitching on air thing. Yeah, it didn't like it, did it? It did not. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. Right, right there. The yeah. Usually they had. Did I miss? No. On those other bags, they had you tape it. That is right on the edge. Woo. Woo. We were sweating that. I was sweating that. So, in previous bags like this, you taped that before they did that. Right. I think I would recommend doing that. Yeah, that would so, help. So um, in other bags that are put together like this, um, I am stitching in an eight by eight hoop at the moment. Um, they have you put a piece of tape all the way across that. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of keeps that all together and in, in position. So I think doing this again, I would put a piece of tape before stitching um, that color stop 11. Yeah. And then you just rip it off afterwards. Yeah, and it'll rip um, off just fine. And it will rip, those stitches are definitely with the, that stitch would definitely rip really cleanly. So, um, hmm, but, but it, it, I mean, it caught it, but yeah, whoa, barely. it's right, right there. Right. All right. Um, number 12 is going to tell us where to place our lining uh, for the second piece. So let's go ahead and, stitch that and it's going to be up on the top portion there which is kind of loosey-goosey <laughs> okay yep i've moved all my stuff out of my reach <laughs> We're going to now take our second piece and completely cover that up. It's not oversized, is it? Turn it. It's eight by eight. Is it? Okay. Whoopda. All right. And completely covering the placement line and the bottom of the project. Stitch the lining tack down, which is going to do that again. So we're going to do this before. Um, 
before tucking. Okay. So that's what I was checking. Is checking. I'm not yep. supposed to tuck yet. Okay. But I am going to tape it because yep. it's a, still a slippery little sucker. We don't want any shifting, and I want to make sure that I'm on that, covering everything. So I'm going to slide that up a little bit more so y'all can see too. I am way clear right and left. Top and bottom, I'm there, but not a lot extra. So just be super careful that. Yeah, you might want to cut that maybe just a smidge. Yeah, I think I would go eight and a half yeah. on one side just to give myself a little bit more. I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, my stitch line is right here. So I have literally that quarter inch here and my stitch line is right here. So I have a quarter inch right there. So. I like to trim to that quarter inch, but I like to stitch with a little bit more Extra. wiggle. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I would cut my um, back lining piece at eight and a half by eight, um, personally. Yes. All right. So pretty side up, but I am going to tape that um, so it doesn't wiggle around while stitching, especially since I don't have any extra wiggle room. Yeah, you know, it's serious if Lisa's taping. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt about that. If I'm putting tape on it, you definitely should put tape on it. All right, so we have our vinylized? Vinylized. Vinylized. I like that. We're going to coin that. Yeah. All right. And it's just going to do, I should have put that down there. Oh, well, not doing it again. There's a little wrinkle in the vinyl. Mm. Oh, well the nerve I know. and it's going to tack that in place right at the top and we are now going to stitch the words so it does have you um matching your top and your bobbin this is almost it's super super light green i'm just mm -hmm. going to let it go right um if you are using a darker color, you'd want to match your bobbin. For sure. For sure. All right. Um, it's the same type of lettering that we had on the in the, the bottom mm -hmm. of the original stitch outs. So we're just going to stitch that. It's going to say he ran out of juice. I would think on the vinyl it should stitch pretty clean. Mm-hmm. Even right over that little wrinkle. This is really, really cute. Huh. Okay, I need to read that part again. <laughs> so we're gonna fold that up, that part I get, and we're gonna put that on. Pretty side down. That part I get. Mm -hmm. Front of the hoop. It's going to tack down the lining without getting the top part. I get that. The lining. So it was taped. So now you're pulling it down. Oh, the lining. Okay. Yeah. And then it'll tack the whole thing down. Yeah. I don't understand why that can't all be stitched in one stitch. Um, I don't know. We'll know in a minute. Do you see where my thought, what I'm mm -hmm. confused about? Oh, maybe because of how it gets turned? Because you're turning it through an opening at the bottom. Oh, 
Yeah, you have to do the line. You have to do the back yeah. and then do the flip. Okay. okay. All right. That's it. Uh, Kim says she'll be coming into the store soon. She needs some stuff. Well, we got some stuff. We got stuff. <laughs> we like stuff. We do. Yeah. We do. That's really cute. It does look really nice. Did you say why we were changing the bobbin? Because of the stitch. Yeah, earlier I did. I didn't I thought you did. I was time. I yeah. was in my own little world over there. I wasn't sure what yeah. what you had said, but Yeah, these tiny little running stitches, they're super tight and they kind of go forward and backwards and that forward and backward motion often kind that, of pulls, pulls that up. bobbin thread up a little bit. So it doesn't really matter what brand of machine you have. It's just one of those little things that happens. Or what thread sometimes. you put in or Oh, the new ones. Okay, yeah. Oh, they're pretty. Mm -hmm. oh, I like you. Yeah. Is that the one that they just continued? Is that what they did? Huh. Okay. I guess they, they don't look quite as much the same here. Um, Kim asked, is there a kit? Yes. And how much? Um, if you scroll up through the comments, you should see a link to the kit. I think the kit is $14.95. Uh, the design is 10. The kit has enough that you can make at least two bags um, yep. of in the bigger size and or at least two of the smaller if you choose. All right. So now that we have the words stitched we are going to tuck the lining through our little cut line so i have to take the tape off the bottom there otherwise it won't move and Pull that through, and we want this time. Oh, wait. I didn't move. Sorry, guys. Oh. It's so hard to get good help. Ha! All right. So we've got the whole lining, which will finish in this position, but we need to tuck it up out of the way for the moment so that we can put the actual back of the... Um, the back on that's the part we just stitched on she just pulled it through the hole pulled it through the hole and now i'm tucking it up out of the way on the back of the hoop so again here's my back of the hoop here's the part with the decorative stitching this is the one we just did i tucked it through the opening Am I skipping the step right now because it's talking about the um it, this looks like the place for the uh oh did I, I don't remember seeing that in my head. Um, number, stip number, stitch number 15 is the placement for the. Oh, I, it just says change Bob and I, I didn't see that that was a stitch. Then yes, I'm ahead. Okay. I'm so sorry. I can leave it back here. It won't hurt anything, but. Right. I got to get this tape off. Me to, I can skip that because we're not using those snaps. Um. No, let's do it. It's okay. fine. So I apologize. Uh, what we're supposed to be doing right now is going to be the placement line, um, actually are little circles for the snap. So this is going to tell you where you should be putting your snaps. And we're going to do snaps, but we're going to be doing the cam snaps, which are just a little bit different. So we're going to go back to the machine and um, we're going to stitch those real quick before we flip our lining. So it's going to stitch up here. So I just, my lining is still tucked in, yeah. but um, my bad. I apologize. Right. So at home, it, your, your lining, your lining will still, still be, be up, here. up here. I jumped ahead a little. I apologize. It said change your line, your bobbin back. But since we didn't change it, I just <laughs> skipped that step. Yeah. It's a really, really, really tiny little circle here, but it'll give us. Um, the alignment of where you would put your, your snap. snap. Um, so we'll, we'll put snaps there so that you can see yep. 
Yes, Kim, we will be at the, um, so her question is we sure uh, will. about our show in Novi. We will definitely be there with bells on. With, maybe. <laughs> that would be funny. With clothes on. <laughs> I, can, I can promise that. I can't promise anything more than that. <laughs> All right. There we go. So now I'm going to uh, tape that. Tape that um, and tape that up. Up at the top. So I started that before, but uh, I got a little ahead of myself. So I just need that out of the way. And then over here, so you can see it's poking out up top. Mm -hmm. So I have clear access to the bottom of my bag. And what I need to do now is take my lining, oh, sorry, my bag back. And I am going to turn that upside down. So pretty side is going to go to pretty side. And I'm going to completely cover. Yep. I would definitely add a half an inch on this. Can you slide that up a little? I can. There you go. I can. Yeah, it's a really tight. Usually they're, the pieces they, are they so, so much bigger. They're so excessive yes. on their size. But, I mean, it fits, but there's right. not extra. All right. So... And now it's going to do like the U. It's at going the to do the U at the bottom. Yeah. Again, I don't normally do this, but because there's just no extra, I don't want it to shift at all. Awesome. Awesome. And the you want to make sure that your backing is flipped up out of the way. Yep. So you need to have this go. coming up mm -hmm. here. And remember that this is going to have vinyl, so it may stick. Um, to yes. the bed of your machine, make and sure it, it stays in. up there, that yep. it doesn't get pulled down as you're adding your hoop to the machine. So um, just keep an eye on that. All right. Just checking to make sure it's still up there. You can see it flopping in the back there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the U to tack this in place mm -hmm. which will give us the back of our bag right and we have the the bat the wrong side is facing yep. up so pretty it's side, side down pretty side. <laughs> just making sure yeah didn't want to stick up there very well no All right. Now we're going to flip it down, right? Now we're going to flip that down. All right. So we're going to come back over here. I'm going to remove those. And it's going to come all the way down here. Yep. So we had it flipped up. We're going to pull it down. And you want that to be nice and tight so that you don't have any big bulges in the bag. And you're going to tape. Again, I am not gonna go this way because I wanna keep my tape out of that if possible, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm catching the corner. And don't push too hard here, especially since we've cut Mm -hmm. um, yep. so if you have um, the foam mat yeah those little wool pressing the, mats the pressing mats are great for this this type of a project exactly. it is perfect for this so that you have support inside of here underneath it's exactly what they're for to be <laughs> so I now have my lining in place and what we're going to stitch is this guy here and it's going to tack the lining in place it's going to give us that shape and it's also going to give us the opening to turn. Mm -hmm. So all of that is going to be tacked in place. We're going to get the tack down for the back of the bag itself as well. And then we'll have the opening to turn through there. Yes. So back to the machine. We still have our light, really light green in for anybody that's wondering what we're using. And 
Shall we go? I think we're good to go. All right. And this is going to go like three quarters of the way around the bag. It's going to leave a gap at the bottom. Yep. Uh, so that we can turn. And it is going to go around this twice. So it's going to come around all the way and then it's going to go back. Uh, that's going to give us a little extra stitching to I'll hold that scissors. so we can kind of, you know, it's going to have a little bit of tugging on it. So you want it to be nice and secure. <clears throat> Then it's going to go back. And while it's doing that, uh, one of the things that Lisa and I are super bad about asking everybody to do, but if you could just take one second while you're watching and hit the thumbs up or the like or a heart, um, it does help with all of these crazy little algorithms. It helps people find our videos. And of course, I needed my weapon of choice. If people find our videos, then we can keep doing this. <laughs> we can. And that is, of course, the goal. Yes. So, um, yes, like, subscribe, love, yep, love, all of those good things. Say hello, um, you comment, know, comment, all anything. That good stuff. Um, and we promise, even if you're watching this later on, it does still help us out. So, um, like I said, uh, we are really bad about asking people to do that, but we greatly appreciate it. Doesn't do. cost you anything to to do that, <laughs> but just a little a little um, click over there would be super grateful for that. Thank you. All right, so we're All gonna right. take this off. There we go. Okay, so here we go. We've got that stitch there, and again, it stopped right here, so we are able to turn through that opening there. So. Once we have that, we can nervously pop that out of our hoop. Yes. I'm going to make that a little bit wider again. Oh, that's better. When I was trimming the apple, I made it smaller. Oh, yeah, now you don't have to keep pushing up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get rid of my hated tape. See, this is why I don't tape because then it's all up in my business. <laughs> I don't want the tape to be in your business. I do not want my tape to be in my business. <laughs> That's bad. It's just, you know. It sticks to that vinyl. Woo! Hi, Miss Cheryl. Thank you, guys. We appreciate that so much. Oh, it's Hi, Leslie. sticking to that. It really wants to stick to that vinyl, doesn't it? Yep. Be careful peel, peeling that off that you don't peel the vinyl separating. Yeah, especially on those edges. Yep. See? More reasons I don't like tape. All right. <laughs> um, so once we have that, you can, of course, use a rotary cutter if you choose to, but we're not at I don't have all that stuff over here. So I went and I got my big old scissors. The big scissors. I got the big gun. So um, we're going to cut about a quarter inch away from that exterior stitch line. So <laughs> Aw, thanks, Deb. A little bit of bulk got that pulled there. Lisa is funny about her tape. <laughs> I got opinions. <laughs> They're not wrong opinions. <laughs> oh. Somebody laughing at me? Yeah. <laughs> Who's laughing at me? Miss Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. That's what I always say. If Lisa is pulling out the tape, you know. You know you better be using it. <laughs> Yes. All right. I need to go just a hair farther on this side. All right. So I have all of my openings, uh, a little bit bigger tabs there. So I have a little bit more to work with. And 
I'm going to trim the corners just like I normally do. I've got a little extra bulk with that vinyl. Um, I wanted to make note in the notes, it says to add fusible backing to your lining piece and the iron-on vinyl to your lining piece. It very specifically says to not add fusible backing anywhere else. The bulk of that is going to prohibit easy management of these points and turning and mm -hmm. yeah, so be really hard to turn. Please don't be tempted to add more fusible backing. You don't need it for stability. There's not enough stitching in there for anything right. like that. Starch the fabric, absolutely. Yep. But do not add extra fusible backing on those um, like cream colors, the outside yeah. pieces. Don't do that. Yeah, you don't need it. It does say that in the notes. We didn't mention it when we started, um, but uh, I, I wanted to make mention of that. Of course, I'm saying it at the end of the video when right. that's probably not super helpful. But um, as I'm cutting and I'm going through all of this, that's when it clicks where I'm like, holy crap, that's that's a lot of stuff. Right. All right. So we're going to turn through the lining first. And wow, is that uh, a little stiff. Yeah. OK. Ooh, doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> there we go. Got to get that big push through. That looks like a hot mess from over here. Uh, I understand that that thought process. <laughs> it's just a big red glob. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's starting to take some shape. Starting to take some shape. All right. And what are you using? Oh, this is my my turning tool. Yes. So there is one also by um, OESD. We don't have those really open in the store. Yeah, the main um, thing that's different is the OESD one has two, two points. Tips. So, so like you have two different and sizes. Smaller. Yeah. Yep. And the um, they, they both have um, flat edges, so. It doesn't roll off your table. Yep, no meatballs here. Mm -hmm. Nothing rolling out the door. Holy crow. Yeah, don't add any more fabric. <laughs> no <laughs> linings in there other than what you need. Nothing extra. My fingernails are not in the best of shape, so. Almost there. Not quite as much of a hot mess. Nope. So, of course, it wants you to stitch that up. Phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> not in my, not in my, uh, my repertoire of normal things. All right. Um, it doesn't say to iron until the next step, but I'm thinking I might. Give it a little press. Give it a little press yeah, it's right now. going to be pretty wrinkly, huh? Yeah. So 
again, keep your uh, Oh yeah, Karen says she loves her OESD uh, turning tool. She wishes that she would have had it when she made 400 plus mug rugs. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, totally. no doubt. That, that's a few. That's a few, yes. Did you have something to turn with? So. Maybe that's why she bought it. <laughs> <laughs> so that definitely um, yeah. made that a lot nicer. We're gonna just kind of re-smooth out the um, um, our pressing sheet is the paper that we removed from the, the slicker vinyl stuff. So, so this is the vinyl as it comes packaged, mm -hmm. you'll peel and then press that on so you have paper you'll use that when you press so that your iron doesn't hit it and then we saved it to use it as a pressing cloth yep and we know it's big enough because it was the back of the original piece exactly so all right that is so much better pressed all of those wrinkles mm -hmm. went bye-bye so that's so much better so now i just need to turn it one more time here we go again put all of those wrinkles right back. No, excuse me. <laughs> going to put my hand right in there and get that as pushed out as I can with that. And you would definitely uh, seal up that before you finished your project. Um, you can see how kind of difficult it is to do the turn. You yeah, you're not going to want to turn it back multiple again. times. Yeah. So like I said, phone a friend or do your hand stitching or whatnot. Exactly. So there is all of that. So they definitely recommend um, pressing once you have... Um, got that turned. So I'm just going to tuck my paper in the bag. I folded the side so I have nice smooth um, slid in really easily and it fits nicely inside the bag. I'm opening the top out just a little bit so that I don't hit. And as long as I'm at it, I'm going to cover up that leather. Better safe than sorry, right? Yup. And get all of your seams nice and smooth. There we go. Super duper cute. Super duper. So All if right. you didn't want to put cams or um, snaps or anything, you could definitely just tuck in the top. Yep. Uh, you know, and, you know, if you've got just a sandwich or something in there, that's definitely fine. Uh, even if you put a snap on, it's probably not going to keep your crumbs from falling yep. down. So um, just a note, I don't know how well you guys can see. There's two stitch lines here. That bottom one is a basting stitch so the bottom one comes out yeah you can take your time on whenever you get to that but um so we've got red and we've got some kind of bronze uh i think the bronze what do I you think, think the bronze too yeah bronze it is so if you have not done cam snaps before You've got a base for each side. And then there is a top and a bottom. So obviously we need two bottoms and two tops. Yes. 
there you go throwing logic in there again i know scary thoughts And doesn't matter which one is the top and which one is the bottom as long as you match them up so you know i don't want two bottoms on this side and right two right. tops on that side but there is no it doesn't really matter which one goes where can you um, move them up a little closer to I the um, camera so they can see what we have So this is the post that goes on both sides yep. and you pinch these into that post and then that little circle goes into that little circle and that's your snap. Awesome. So let's make it happen. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. So first thing we're going to do is make a hole. And we're making the hole where the the little where we. I am the using circle. that as my space. Um, I was trying to um, push through on the other side so I could see. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of fabric in there. Yeah. Do you need like the stiletto or something? I or? might need a stiletto. We'll see. All right. So we're going to push that right through the hole. And you want to pull so you have the plastic point All as the way flat here as possible. And then you're going to put your piece right over that. And then you get your little handy dandy tool that you bought with your handy dandy snaps and you just grip right on top of that and squeeze squeak 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 and boom you have half of that done so i'm gonna repeat on the other side and then i'll mark where to go down here so Don't poke yourself. Exactly. That's why I was going down instead of right up into your hand. <laughs> All right, I want this one. <laughs> Switch sides. And I'm just using my thumb to push that in. Again, we're going to place that piece on top of the post. Slipper little suckers. And then place that in the little clamp. Squeak. Oh, no squeak. Oh, oh there, there it is. is. <laughs> and that guy is now in place. So we've got our top pieces on. So I'm just going to make a little mark. there right there and this one we want to come up through the back because for the snap to actually snap in, the um, so that same post. Yep. My nails are usually in much better shape than this. Stuff. As I'm saying that, there goes some of my nail. Okay, then we put that on there. This 
this just has to fit inside wherever it is that you're going which that's the only catch is you have to make sure that you can reach wherever you're putting your snap can you see yep okay and it will squish the inside plastic you can't see it real clearly but basically then that just snaps in yay that's literally all there is to a cam snap cool so super easy see there went my nail poke a hole poke a hole and top and bottom so they come in all different colors and sizes and sizes, sizes and uh different shapes mm -hmm. you can get you know decorative shapes or just the circles but super easy no sewing involved as you know is important for me yeah. my fingernails are just not playing nice today i'm sorry A lot easier than this looks. <laughs> Just Do you need some help? I might. I, this is uh, my fingernails just bending. It's not. Um, uh, oh, because it's a little bit long, right? So yeah. you're not able to get in. You want me to push? One more time, and if not, I'll pass okay. it over to you. Sounded like I heard a pop. Yeah, there you go. And one more piece. Don't put it on upside down. So let's zoom in just one time here so we can see. Oh, there we go. So you have your post, you place your plastic, place the clamp, make sure that the clamp doesn't push the plastic off position. Let me get it in there and then I'll move my grip. And then it's literally pushing. Squeeze. Here we go. And ta -da! and then focus, focus. You can see the smushed. No, you can't. Where am I at? There we go. You can see the smushed plastic inside. Yep. Okay. There we go. Sorry. And that is how it makes it stay. Gotcha. Is it? Yeah. It combines the two awesome. based on that smushed bit of plastic in there. So there we have our steel Sweet. bag. Good job, Lisa. Dun da da da. always Not fun to play too with bad. things yeah so there we go there is the finished um sandwich bag and yep. uh, that's definitely sandwich style it's definitely the size you would need for a sandwich mm -hmm. um i yeah, mean you could put be... snacks in it but it would be you know that... half a sandwich maybe i don't know i right. guess i'd have to see right um probably snack bag for the other one i mean you're talking what six by instead of eight by yeah so two, i mean yeah that would be a much yes would be like the little sand, the little snack bags that you get from ziploc yeah no All doubt right. well so, um we good. are super excited that everyone joined us today so, um do you want to show these really quickly so these just came in the uh the mail they just were delivered there are three new king star metallic, metallic. threads uh just in case you need to know this <laughs> They should be up on our website. Um, if they aren't already, they will be up by the end of the day. Yep, we just um, need to. But there is a colors. pretty pink, a pretty purple, this and a, a really pretty green. Really nice green. Um, so I, mean, I like the pale green, but three brand new colors. Yes, they're up. All right, so you can buy them. It's M A twenty seven. Oh, 25, 25, 26, 26 and twenty seven. If you're looking for the three new colors, 
So um, and just in case you need to add to your obsession with metallic threads, that metallic green would be so cute on that. Oh, no doubt. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. there you go. There you go. Um, Connie says she needs to make two of them before, before tomorrow. tomorrow. You can totally do well, that. Well, I have no doubt that you can do it. Absolutely. So, um, Lisa and I did it, so you should be able to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. There, that was actually really fun and pretty straightforward. I yes. mean, you just have to read the instructions and um, follow and believe what they say. I know it's, it's hard, you know, Sometimes. cutting that mm -hmm. like step one, cut, cut your stabilizer in half. <laughs> Wait, what? what? <laughs> but it works so and it's actually brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I would have had the guts to try that i mean i suppose guts I mean, who cares it's just fabric if it if it doesn't work right. i don't mean it like that but i mean my brain wouldn't have gone there i guess is more where i'm yeah you know that that wouldn't have been the uh hmm, well why don't we Your just first chop choice. that apart yeah. and and make this work it'll be fine but it it works, it works. and it's it's a brilliant um it is it's a brilliant step process so um have fun with it make lots of bags yeah. and um you know Maybe write your own jokes in there. That would be fun that too. Be really fun. You'd have, yeah. uh, you know, you can look up terrible jokes. Mm -hmm. Not that this one's terrible, but right. that would make it funnier. Um, but there you go. So thanks for stitching. Happy stitching to you. Yes. And uh, stitching along with us. And maybe. We'll see, maybe some of you this afternoon. Maybe we're we'll see talk this about afternoon. Quarter, quarter inch. inch. Themes. We'll see you there. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.